From a manufacturer perspective, the EHR requirement might provide opportunities for manufacturers to collaborate with ACOs and access their formularies. Can you discuss the scope of these opportunities and what manufacturers need to consider as they pursue them? Absolutely. As I said before, data is going to be very important. These accountable care organizations are going to be looking for the most uh, efficient and highest value they can bring to their patients. As I mentioned before, they will. one of the benchmarks is the expenditure benchmark, and they need to perform below that benchmark in order to get their bonus payment. Now, they also have to meet their quality uh, benchmark as well. You can't have one without the other. So they are going to be looking for the treatments that are the most cost effective and provide the highest value for their patients. That's where manufacturers can really help them. The manufacturers who are creating that data and really understanding the outcomes that are important, looking at things like reducing length of stay in the hospital, reducing ER visits, reducing side effects, those are things that will help save that practice and that accountable care organization money. And so developing tools that manufacturers can bring into these accountable care organizations will be important, especially when they start looking at how they're um, developed. They're used to going in and speaking with physicians one-on-one -on -one and talking about their product. I think the ability to do that will be decreased over time. And so they're going to have to understand what that structure is within the ACO, who they talk to, who the decision makers are, how do you get on formulary, what information is important to those decision makers, and really look to develop tools to support those people so that can ensure that their products are on formulary. I think another thing that will happen is these accountable care organizations are based on evidence-based medicine. And we think that everyone is treated that way today, but that may not be the case. There's a lot of variability. And we, we're not looking for cookbook medicine, but really some guidelines that are used regularly when determining what the best treatment is. And so as manufacturers can help really figuring out what those guidelines look like and providing information to do so, that too is another opportunity for them to get in front of ACOs. So how might the creation of ACOs produce new opportunities for collaboration among manufacturers, providers, and payers? As I mentioned, there are lots of opportunities for the manufacturers, but I think the biggest piece is that accountable care organizations are just one mechanism to really moving towards value-based uh, health care. And too often in today's uh, healthcare industry, we're siloed, it's fragmented. In fact, there was a study recently done and the average Medicare beneficiary sees two primary care physicians and three specialists. And if they have any type of chronic disease, they could see up to as many as 13 specialists. So you really want the provider, the payer, the manufacturer, the patient to be on the same page. I heard of an example where the payer actually provides a report card back to the physician before he sees that patient to look at what medicines the patient is taking, what uh, potential duplication in care is happening, and so they are working collaboratively to making sure that that patient's care is coordinated, that he or she is getting the best possible care, and they're getting the right treatment at the right time. On the flip side, what negative effects do manufacturers need to watch for as ACOs are created? For example, will manufacturer interaction with physicians be further limited? As I mentioned, that's probably the case. Um, as these ACOs try to really streamline uh, delivery of health care and become more efficient, they are going to develop treatment guidelines and formularies. And so once those decisions are made, there may not be a need to speak with the manufacturer representative. However, there are likely, like, as I said, tools that can be developed that can help them really provide value. And I think as it's always been, those uh, manufacturers who think about the big picture and really understand about care delivery and the, the therapeutic area and are looking at the broader picture rather than just their product specifically will really have a leg up. The other thing I mentioned before is that the Medicare expenditure benchmark is only based on Part A and Part B uh, claims. So Part D claims are not part of that. So will that potentially incentivize providers to use oral products over physician administered? So we need to kind of watch and see how that develops. Are there steps that manufacturers can take to prepare for or to counteract these effects? I believe there are. Much like manufacturers put together value messages for payers, 
they'll need to start thinking the same way for accountable care organizations. You're going to develop value-based tools. And you think of a budget impact model that you would bring into a Cigna or an Aetna to demonstrate how your product and or a competitor affects their budget. You'll do the same thing within the ACO model. And even probably more um, helpful would be something like an analyzer. Because if you bring tools in that show claims data or EHR data from a national sample, the payer would typically, and in today's world, an ACO will say, well, that's not my population. So you can develop tools, software tools, that actually download their information from their EHR into this tool that can show the effects that one treatment or another would have on their specific ACO population. And those types of things, I think, will be very meaningful to the ACO decision makers. ACOs have a goal of creating a system that rewards quality of care versus volume of care. From your perspective, what are the most significant obstacles that stand in the way of this paradigm shift? What can be done at the payer and provider level to help facilitate this change? Yeah, I think one of the main things is data. So right now, as I said before, that EHR component is so important. And I think there is data out there, but are people actually looking at it and utilizing it and analyzing to determine how they can be more uh, quality-based, value-based? Are they doing patient satisfaction surveys as they will need to do under ACOs? How do they measure that? Uh, how are they really looking at improving efficiencies? All of that is bound in the data that they will have within their EHRs. So getting those connected, while it's a big undertaking and likely very costly, as we talked about before, is really a key to the success. I think the other thing is really understanding how physicians think and helping them understand that moving to a value-based system is really what's best for the patient. However, it's a dichotomy. When you think about making the quality measures and really under understanding and ensuring that those quality measures are, are included and that they are met, the physician is going to spend more time with the patient and take their time and really coordinate their care. However, that may drive the expenditures up. On the other hand, if they are keeping their expenditures down and moving that patient through quickly, the patient not, might not be getting exactly what they need. So it's trying to figure out that balance and do it in the way that is efficient but provides the highest quality to the patient and to the system. From a patient perspective, ACOs are intended to create greater connectivity in the care delivery process. But some worry that ACOs might also limit patient access to newer and more costly drugs and technologies. What are your thoughts on these potential pros and cons? I do think that there is that possibility. However, if that product, whether it's expensive or new or whatever, really creates value for that patient or for the system itself, can it reduce ER visits? Does it improve patient safety? Does it help coordinate care or increase the care or decrease the caregiver burden? If those things really do happen, regardless of the cost of that product, then it should be utilized within the system. Again, it comes back to what we talked about before about that dilemma between how physicians have been used to practicing medicine and how they've been paid. And if we can get past that and really focus on the quality piece, I think the expenditure piece and the cost savings will come. Lorraine, this has been great. Thank you so much for sharing your insight on this continually changing issue. My pleasure, thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us. We'll be back soon with another all-new episode. Until then, if it's on your mind, it's in the know.